you here with someone else as well and he'll be speaking to us a little uh, later on so we want to say Karibu sana. Uh, we have um, members of the judiciary here in Kenya and uh, we're glad to have Justice uh, Thoga as well as Justice Musinga who will be joining us a little later on. Many many thanks to all of you. Uh, you all very welcome as friends of Home Care Spiritual Fellowship, friends of our dear sister uh, the Reverend Dr. Judy Mbogwa and her family uh, as well. So we'd like to uh, begin by having a time of worship. We have invited and we'd like to welcome uh, dear sister and gospel uh, singer, gospel artist here in Kenya, much loved, uh, Dr. Sarah Kay. And she's going to come and give us uh, a time or lead us in a time of worship and thanksgiving. Uh, please help me welcome to the podium our gifted gospel singer, amen. Yes, we can clap for her as well. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much. Good morning, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. thank God for this opportunity to be in his presence just to acknowledge his faithfulness, his goodness, his love. We will be worshiping God with a few songs just to prepare our hearts even as we continue. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, 
You are is making us whole this morning. And we thank you and appreciate presence this morning, Lord. Thank you for our hearts, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. You are faithful this morning. You are awesome this morning. You are mighty in our lives this morning. And it is our presence that is making us whole, Lord. We give you glory and we give you honor. We give our hearts of worship, Lord, because you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Father. morning. Blessed be your holy name. You have to worship. Bless the Lord.
whatever thing that we do to glorify your name in this world to worship you and exalt your name father we need you we need you to help us to worship you to sing like never before to praise like never before to appreciate before before and not to doubt that you love him we bless your name lord jesus we give you glory thank you lord Se 
seated in the presence of the Lord as we welcome Archbishop Arthur Kitonga to come and pray and just open our proceedings in God's presence in prayer.
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. No rejoicing, no, no even smiling a little bit. This is a great day. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Welcome to this great event. And before I pray, I want to tell you briefly why are we here. I know you know, but I want to tell you a little bit better than what, deeper than what you know. I've uh, been traveling to and fro with the Reverend Yudimbugwa, preaching the gospel when she was in Pakwa. She started Pakwa. That was a women alliance in Africa, which was uh, helping many, many women. And it's still, Pakwa is still there. And uh, we traveled with her about 30 countries, helping ladies every corner in, the, in many countries in Africa. I know Reverend Yudimbukwa is a true servant of God. When she began this ministry, I witnessed and where she began. And the one vision she has is a vision which Jesus said, whatever you do to these little ones, you are doing unto me. She is closer to Kibera Slam, and she is feeding, feeding many children and also giving them clothes and even blankets and helping very poor families. I want to encourage her to continue because our reward in heaven is great, according to the Bible. Jesus said, whatever you do to these little ones, you are doing to who? To me. Our reward in heaven is great. Not only that, she has a retreat center where you can go and stay there praying for even if, even if it's one month, you can stay there praying. We have, we meet there with the best, you know, servants of God for meetings, conferences, a wonderful retreat center. When she was helping the poor, she also thought about the preachers in a high level where they can go, not only high level, but all preachers can go there and in that retreat center and pray. I thank God even when this event has been also, you know, being visitors from America, visitors from Africa, different countries, you are blessed to be here because what you are witnessing today is a great, great event done by this woman of God. This lady, me and Reverend Dennis White, who is a missionary, we was a missionary in uh, Sita ministry. We met in uh, Trinidad, 1978, when I was preaching there. And I invited him, I told him, please welcome to Africa. I would be happy to see you. And when he came and he has laid a very big foundation here, we shared together about Reverend Yudi and we said it's good that we could anoint her because she has worked for some time without being, you know, anointed, ordained as a preacher of the gospel. And we ordained her and she now became Reverend. And that helped us also, us also to do a lot of work in the ministry as a reverend. I want to tell all of you, also Reverend Judy is married to a great man, <laughs> Bugua, <laughs> who has to do the R, and they have wonderful, wonderful children. As I stand here before I pray, Reverend Judy, continue. It is today when I was praying, the Lord showed me that the world can come to an end any time when I was praying. And those who have come to Kenya today, I request you please remember this country. Politics is messing up this nation and we need your prayers. You are just prophets of the hour and God brought you here for a divine purpose for you to pray for this nation. And so I want to shorten, I was given five minutes and I thank God because even when we are here, we are going to witness blowing the trumpet and my prophet is here who has come to bless also this ministry they worship here 
I want all of us to stand and to join together for a short word of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we pray, I came with my dear wife, Bishop Josephine Kitonga, and she has also been standing with Reverend UD in the ministry, and she's praying for, for, for her all the time, this ministry of home care. This ministry of home care is real home care. She does what God has told her, and with the revelation she got from above to help the poor, poor suffering children. It's a great honor to have all of you. I see great servants of God here. We have the prophets here. Apostles are here. Leverance, bishops are here. Let us bow our heads for a short word of prayer. Our dear everlasting Father, King of glory, we approach now to your presence with thanksgiving. We thank you, my Father, for the vision you have given to Reverend Judy Mbugwa for outreach in this millennium hour. Lord, we thank you for the vision you have given her, oh Father, because we see she is helping so many people who are suffering left and right. She is helping the poor, giving them food, oh God Almighty. And Jesus, who said, whatever we do to these little ones, we are doing unto you. I pray, God Almighty, after this event of 40 years, as we celebrate 40 years, that will open more, even more years to celebrate and more years to serve. And it will open doors for her to get more money. She needs a lot of money to help the suffering, the poor who come here for food. They come here for clothes. They come here for touch. They can pray for them, oh my Father. And they come here also to worship the poor, the poor. Oh my Father, I pray that you give Jude Mbukwa, if Jesus tarries, long life to live to serve you, oh my Father. We pray for your anointing to remain in her, oh my Father. And bless her, and may open doors for her that she can be a blessing to many. Lord, she has even a retreat center where many servants go for prayer and wait upon you for days and days. That's another vision to reach also those who are high class. My Father, I thank you for all the your servants who are here. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that we will continue to pray for you, Dimbugwa, and strengthen her physically, even spiritually, to win more souls to the kingdom, because we see that day is drawing closer for the rapture. I pray, God Almighty, for home care to climb the ladder in a high level, and I pray, my Father, that all roads very soon will be leading to this center to come and listen to your voice and for the poor people to come and pray. And I pray for all your servants who have come in different countries, oh my Father. Oh Father, I pray even for our speaker, oh Jeb Johnston, all the way from America, the president of our ministry, that you bless him as he gives thy word. My Father, let thy will be done. I pray for your blessings upon all who have come here to witness this event of 40 years. Bless all of them and let your angels of peace rest upon them. And all the realm who have a vision for outreach, bless them. Let all live long. Thank you, my Father, for hearing my cry. Find us together in this fellowship. And as we continue, we welcome your presence that all of us will listen to your voice as we continue this event. I pray, believing, if Jesus tarries, we shall even celebrate 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, even more years, if Jesus tarries in this event. Father, as I come to the end of my prayer, I pray that you bless Judy and her husband and the children. Strengthen them that they will continue listening to your voice and bless all your servants who are here. I pray, believing, Lord, you have heard my cry. And we are going to continue blessing us Amen. until we finish this event. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Put Amen. your hands together for Hallelujah. Jesus. Put your hands Amen. together for Jesus. Amen. Amen. With a smile, greet your neighbor and tell him, welcome to 40 years anniversary. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Karibu, I'm going to sit down and I might not stay long.
If you see me going out, I'm going to ordain some ministers. Amen. So understand, if you don't see me, you know I'm going somewhere. But my wife is here with you. God thank, bless you. Thank you, Archbishop. God bless you. <laughs> Archbishop, we want to thank you for your apostolic prayer and the role of ministry that you have served over the Reverend Dr. Judy Mbugwa. It is a joy to have you with us, and we are blessed for your presence here today. Amen. We also want to uh, welcome a very special group of people who join us, joining us online and on television. Hope TV is uh, airing this live as we speak, and I'd like us to all just give a round of applause to a very special audience watching us from all over the world, and we are so glad that you are going to take some time to be with us. I'm going to invite uh, Bishop Othaniel um, Wambili to come. He's going to blow the chauffeur. And uh, as he comes, I'll ask that uh, the chauffeur be brought for him. Uh, it is in the sound room, if uh, somebody can pick that up and bring it uh, to the stage as Bishop approaches as well. And as you know, we're here under the theme, come and see what the Lord has done. Amen. You can repeat that to your neighbor. Come and see what the Lord has done. That neighbor didn't believe you. Find another neighbor who will come and see what the Lord has done. Amen. The sons of Korah in Psalm 66 said, come and see what the Lord has done. He's made a way through the sea. He has done great things, things that we will never forget here, even in this ministry. Bishop, you're welcome. Amen. Can I hold this uh, for you? We just um, blow the chauffeur. Uh, the blowing of a trumpet was actually a marker of a new event. And this morning, we are actually marking a new event, uh, even as we celebrate the 40 years anniversary. Uh, and I know that the Lord's purposes shall be established. I will blow the chauffeur eight times. Uh, it's a picture of new beginnings in this place. And I know that the Lord will continue to renew, strengthen Mama, and our entire family of home care, spiritual fellowship. We thank God so much for what he's doing and recovering many of us as sons and daughters in this season of time. So if we can, uh, I will also request once we blow the chauffeur uh, the eighth time, you will just clasp your hands together and raise a sound of celebration and praise and give glory and honor to the Lord God Most High. And so the first seven, I will do very short blasts. Then the last one will be a long blast. In Hebrew, it's normally known as the Tekia Gadola. It's a huge one. It's like a jubilee sound of celebration and magnifying God. And so please join me as we magnify God and join with the heavenlies as we celebrate our God. You, Bishop. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. There's just a wonderful atmosphere of worship and thanksgiving in this place today. From the moment we started in worship with our sister Sarah Kay and her team, thank you uh, to the prayers of our Archbishop uh, and indeed from the blowing of the chauffeur. It is now time to go down memory lane. We're going to uh, view a video. Those of you who may be seated outside 
in the overflow, you have a screen that will also play the same video. This is a documentary telling the story of what God has done in the ministry of Home Care Spiritual Fellowship. Amen. Are you excited? Are you excited? And the sounds of the air, and the sounds of the air, I carry the flavor of God that sees on the earth. And the soul. See what the Lord has done. We started with 71. Today we are feeding 600 children in Kebera. I said we start taking them to school. Today we are taking about 160. Some now have qualified, we have lawyers. Those girls that were coming to school, some of them got pregnant. Then we remembered we had the dressmaking school. So now we have trained over 200 uh, girls. See what the Lord has done. This ministry was started because we felt a need and a gap. I was going to a big church and the pastors would be calling groups of prayer and they would say today we are having prayers for couples or today we are having a, fu a function for couples. I wouldn't go because my husband was away but even when he came because he was not born again he would not agree to go to those fellowships and then uh, the pastor would call for widows. I wouldn't go because uh, a fellowship for widows. I said, I'm not a widow. And then he would call for single mothers. I said, I'm not a single mother. So this one day, the pastor was announcing and saying, this group will go there, this group will go there. And I felt so bad. So I said, God, in which fellowship do I, do I fit in? And I really felt lonely in a big church. But the Lord said, it's not time for pity party. Yes, birthed out of a need to see the salvation of families, loved ones. The fellowship's theme is drawn from Acts chapter 16, verse 31a. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. The family is God's unique design for the start, nurturing and development of human life. In the family, we create joyful memories and memorable experiences. Not every family is celebrating. The family unit today is under siege. Even families of believers are not spared either. Can anything be done? Yes, God has raised places of refuge and the story of home care is one such place. We thought that uh, uh, we are just going to be praying, but women started coming to ask for food. Women from Kibera, I remember four of them, and all of them are HIV AIDS, and they were taking retrovirus, but they were hungry. And so one of them, they got sick, and one of them called Margaret, called, sent word from the hospital and said, please ask Judy to buy me a coffin when I die. I don't want to be thrown the way they are throwing people, wrapping them with the polythene papers and throwing them into the grave. Please don't allow that to happen to me. And I said I will do that. I even bought her a white dress because she died and I bought her a coffin. But I said, is there anything else we could do? The Fadili Women Support Group for Women Living with HIV AIDS. Sarah alikuwa na big hope. What we do in this program is we just train them to be confident in themselves, to know what they are doing, to get a new life, new values. Uh, mostly we want them to accept the Lord, Jesus as their saviour, so that their life will change. We want the transforming aspect to be not just physical, but spiritual too. Some of them were told that they are the cause of the HIV in the home. Some got married very early and didn't know what was happening. Some were told they were nothing, completely nothing, chased out of home. family, <laughs> Nikasema tu sasa ni Mungu nimebaki tu na Mungu. Sasa ni yawa kama rev Mungu aliingia ndani yake. Na tulikuwa tunapewa chakula ya roho na chakula ya mwili. 
tukaendelea kutoka tuoyo to 6 tulikuwa tuna save pesa sasa tukaona badala tukae na hiyo pesa unaweza fanya nayo kitu kidogo the Bethel dressmaking school for the underprivileged youth Bethel is a sewing project Mostly we are picking young people who could not finish their schooling. They didn't have a certificate. Some didn't even go up to standard eight or standard seven. And they come in, um, some can't even speak English. So our teachers mostly will teach in Swahili. Because the students, that's what the students understand. Mama Kuskia, I'm pregnant. So yeah, Alini Fukuza. I'm not ready to be called a shosho, you are a failure, you are a loser, you have disappointed me. So I can yambia, take everything and leave. And I am 15 years. Wakati nilikuja hapa, naikawa next day ni Thursday. Na nikapata 2015, kulikuwa na dhim, ilikuwa meandikuwa po vessels of honor. Ayo yo neno ili niguza. I want to be a vessel of honor. Wakati nilimaliza, nilienda nyumbani. Na ikawa, akarudi tena kunita, kanyambia, tunatafta watu wenye watashona uniform. Kwa wale wanafunzi wenye tunasponsor. Badala ya kununua uniform kuje mtengeneza. So nika kam, nikaanza kutengeneza uniform. Sasa mwisho wa mwezi venye lipo fika, Mini lipewa karatasi. Nika shindwa he, karatasi. Check. Ni meandikiwa, check. Kitu yenye sijawai, juara sijui na peleka wapi. The Home Care Mentors Program serves the needs of orphaned and vulnerable children living in the Kibera slum. The slum, with up to a quarter of a million residents, is often depicted as the face of extreme poverty, poor sanitation, youth delinquency and unconducive living conditions. Many wonder what good could possibly come out of this. In contrast, however, the Home Care Mentors Program has since its launch in 2006 been committed to the discovery, harnessing and nurturing of the potential of the children in Kibera. Imagine the children of Kibera full of hope for a better tomorrow. Imagine children bringing light in their small dark homes because they have experienced the love of God. Our utmost desire is to see children of Kibera grow up in all dimensions and become agents of change in their own homes and communities. Our vision is to see orphaned and vulnerable children belonging to a community and enjoying its full love, care and nurturing support. Our mission is to engage with and empower community institutions to be responsive to and proactive in the protection and holistic care of orphans and vulnerable children. The Home Care Mentors Program is multifaceted and comprises of the following. One, weekly Bible clubs every Saturday in Kibera, education sponsorship for close to 200 children, provision of uniforms, textbooks, and learning stationery, a monthly food ration to supplement households economically challenged, exciting vacation Bible camps at the serene home care retreat center in Karen, holiday academic and mental health clinics, a young mother's initiative to empower teenage and young mothers, and finally, an end-year annual Christmas party for over 500 children. The Weekly Bible Clubs. Our Weekly Bible Club programs are presently reaching up to 600 children with the Word of God, nutritious meals, and loving mentorship. There are several stories, but here is one such story, a story of a young man raised from nothing in Kibra, fully educated by home care through primary, high school and college. He is now a fully-fledged lawyer. This is Nehemiah, a young man whose testimony inspires many. I came to home care 206 uh, towards December when they had a, an annual event of celebrating the life of Jesus Christ. And that's how I joined 
uh, home care uh, scholarship. In class 7, that's when I wore my first uh, butter shoes in, uh, in class 7 at Anajali Primary School. So they paid for my school fees in class 7 and class 8. I did well in class 8 when I joined Form 1 at Kitui High School. I also thank God for, for connecting me with home care. In home care, I, I met uh, someone like uh, uh, the president of the Court of Appeal, uh, Justice Daniel Musinga. Weekly radio and TV broadcast has seen countless testimonies of impact from viewers and listeners. I'm so glad. Thank you for tuning in to this home care spiritual broadcast on Hope FM. This radio broadcast has been broadcast for almost 15 years. I am very grateful that um, home care is also in media and therefore has been able to... At that time, I had prepared food which I poisoned so that they can eat at night and die, never to wake up next morning. But I visited a neighbor who had a telecast. That is when I saw a program by Reverend Judy Bogua. It was Jerry who was speaking. Then he was speaking about better life, better future for everyone. So I came to know home care through that. I took a phone from my neighbor, the same house, house I was in. Then I wrote a text that I'm desperate, I want to commit suicide. Within five minutes, there was a lady who was working here, a good mother, called Mrs. Moturi. She responded to me immediately. The other thing the Lord said, he would like us to have a prayer center where people will come and pray and just be with the Lord without interruption. We prayed and the Lord showed us that it was going to be Karen, the Karen Retreat Center. A flourishing prayer and retreat center in Karen, open for personal or corporate prayer and conferences. We thank God for giving us this place. It is a prayer center, a place where you can come rest, come seek God and get refreshed. Finally, several thriving branches including Limuru, Nakuru, Muranga, to mention but a few. Here, you find women in prayer. It's a full house. Grannies come to intercede for their grandchildren. At their age, they can sing and dance. But how did it all begin? We go down the memory lane to trace the founder and CEO of Home Care Spiritual Fellowship. When you trace her background, there is no trace of a silver spoon. She was not born into a prominent family or thrust onto the universal stage like a political leader. No. But this house, it was even exceeding. My dad and mom were given prices because of building such a beautiful house mm -hmm. those days. Just a simple girl who dared trust God, invoke his name on a matter so close to his heart, the family institution, before she had any idea what her future might be or an awareness that she might have a special mission, this little girl was living a typical life in a simple village in Ngesha in Limuru. She was one of the nine children of Mr. Hosea Wainaina, an inspector of schools, and Mama Isabella Wainaina. That's my dad. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. I love him. I feel like I want to go home with him. Mm -hmm. He brought me to this church. Yes. He was the teacher. He was also a Sunday school teacher. Mm -hmm. And he was the headmaster at that time of Getcha Primary School, mm -hmm. where I came to school. Mm -hmm for eight years and so it's such a wonderful 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 momentous moment mm -hmm. for me to see my dad here because this is historical yes. you are celebrating 120 mm -hmm. and you can see the seed you plant the bible says proverbs 22 6 mm -hmm. bring up your children in the way they should grow and, and when they grow they will not depart when we visit the reverend mama 
who just turned 96. She can sing from the hymns and read her Bible without specs. Okay. 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 She has this to say to her younger daughter, now 75. Well, we all agree. Young is pretty relative at this point. Glory to his name. A fruit doesn't fall too far from the source tree. Against all odds, she rose from adverse circumstances in her youth. She would later work as a senior administrator in the insurance industry from where she would later resign to serve for 21 years as a continental director of the Pan-Africa Women Alliance, PACWA. She is the one who started PACWA, which has brought so many ladies across Africa together and she is the founder of that organization. This is how it all started. The story of Home Care Spiritual Fellowship, founded in 1980 and now celebrating over four decades of God's faithfulness and power. These ladies were right at the beginning, young women 40 years ago. But now, not so young anymore but can revisit their memories to recount the humble beginnings from where the Lord raised the ministry. I was one of them, eh? mm. and I don't know other, other people, you know, other people. Mm. Number, we, are number, we are many, mm. some from the church, mm. and other from different churches, the different denomination, you know, there was no class. Eh? And so we prayed, uh, and we read the word, the, the, the word. Then she told us the reason for calling us. Eh? When uh, my mom wanted to come to Judy's service mm. and she was very excited. Mm. Even whatever she was talking that uh, now she will be going very soon mm. and Judy is taking over mm. what she has been doing. Before she went home mm. and that was the last journey mm. because after going there she passed on. Mm. She called her and said you are taking my mantle. Mm. From now on, mm. I had you over. Mm. So she had it over, not to us, mm. but to her. These were the foundations or roots of a life of prayer that proved handy in the days to come. Her Prince Charming, who for the longest had no personal relationship with the Savior, would later turn his life to the saving grace of Jesus and now has this story to say. Home care has done a lot for me. I have been helping her, assisting her, just behind the scene. Mm. But uh, in return, God has done a lot for us. And above all these things, I would say that uh, the greatest thing I would like to mention about uh, the home care is that I got saved through home care. Wow. So the first Beneficiaries, I can say, of the Home Care Spiritual Fellowship is really with the head of the home, the fathers, who turn to the Lord as a result of the prayers and the faith of the women of Home Care Spiritual Fellowship. Then came us, uh, the kids, and many of us, uh, unfortunately, as we became teenagers and became young adults, 
many of us uh, did not uh, stay with the Lord. I think I'm probably the best example of the children who walked away from God. And when I was in my early 20s, I backslid as a Christian and I stayed in the wilderness for many years. And the devil uh, tormented me for 30 years with the problem of alcoholism. And for those 30 years, my mother prayed for me every day. She never ever gave up. And eight years ago now, uh, the Lord miraculously delivered me from alcoholism. And now I'm back uh, as a Christian, I'm walking with the Lord. And um, not only am I walking with him, but God is using me in ministry. I have had the opportunity to minister in high schools. I've also had opportunity to, to speak uh, with people who have struggled with alcoholism and drug addiction. And right now, uh, the Lord is uh, showing me what he wants to do with my ministry. Please come along and see what God has done. When men and women dare to trust him, call on him and depend on him. Let's get to the great day. Every day we had purpose that we are praying for our husbands and our children. He in hope there. Yes, there and you was could conscious see charity. of that. You could see charity crying and crying for you. <laughs> so <laughs> I know so, where she is. She's happy that you got born again before <laughs> she went to be with the Lord. On the 29th of May, 2011, mm. someone called Edward Dufuri mm. was a church the youth director yes. at St. Andrews. Mm. He was preaching. Mm. And in the course of his preaching, mm. he asked the congregation mm. how many, who would like to live a life directed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we asked that we, whoever would like to live his, the rest of his life mm -hmm. directed by the Lord Jesus Christ to stand up mm. and I felt a, a voice telling me to, <laughs> a voice to stand up, <laughs> to stand up. Yeah. I tried to resist mm. but the voice insisted yes so I stood up I thought I was standing up uh, with, with a lot people. of other people <laughs> but I stand out you were alone I was the only one mm. and then mm. I stood up and he prayed with me and so on and so forth and then said uh, I come back to the come to the front uh -huh. ah, and there it was and I came went to the front I uh. found uh, a gentleman there an elder uh. called Karigidi uh. there uh -huh. and he received me Amen. and I knelt down and uh, literally collapsed hallelujah your salvation is such a great testimony of the power of God. See what the Lord has done. Ladies and gentlemen, Home Care Spiritual Fellowship at 40. Yes, 40. As Home Care Fellowship celebrates 40 years of powerful ministry in this nation, pray for the family, pray for leaders like Kai, Pray for the nation. I wish them God's blessing because they are doing, they are playing a very important role in this country and particularly praying for the family. You know, the family is the foundation of every society. If we have strong families, we will have a better nation. We will have less crime. In fact, my work, our work as the judiciary will even be made easier. As I interacted with the Home Care Spiritual Fellowship, mm -hmm. I found that uh, it was uh, a ministry that is run on very sound moral principles. Wow. It has leaders of integrity. Wow. It is a ministry that if I give a shilling to that ministry, wow. I know the money will be used for the intended purpose. Mm -hmm. I know that the money will be put to very good use. Wow. It is a ministry that I would encourage people to partner with because they are touching mm. the very vulnerable people mm. in the community mm. 
through the work that they do, particularly in, in, in Kibera. No great work of such magnitude can be done single-handedly, even though the vision to rebuild Jerusalem's walls came to Nehemiah. He didn't rebuild alone. The home care team has not walked this journey alone. They have enjoyed the company of family, friends, church leaders, acquaintances, partners, neighbors, and to a large extent, supporters who allowed God to use them and their resources to be a blessing to the needy families in Kenya. Several of these speak out about their perceptions, their views of the ministry from a distance, and most of all, the impact of the ministry. They have a lot to say, but we sample out just a few. Hear them out. I take this opportunity to thank Home Care Spiritual Fellowship so much. For, the, for what they've been doing in the community mm. through the leadership of Reverend uh, Judy Mbugwa. Mm. We've seen the impact in the society, mm. uh, the programs they've been running mm. uh, in sponsoring mm. needy children from the slum in Kianda and Katwekera, mm. whereby they support the children mm. with the education, mm. but they support them in such a way that the children remain in their homes, yeah. they remain in their homes, so they have the family network, not removing them from the family support the network, but they fund their education rather than taking them maybe to a home or something. So they fund them where they are. Hello, Reverend Judy and the home care family. My wife Nancy and I join you in thanking God for 40 years of a very blessed ministry to families and to the underprivileged in our nation and beyond. The impact you have made and the lives you have touched directly and indirectly, only eternity will tell. May I thank you, my elder Judy, for your patience, resilience, and consistency over the years. You have taught me how to walk by faith by attempting great things for God. The wisest man Solomon said in Proverbs 11.25, A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. You have refreshed many. May you experience a great refreshing yourself. May your latter days be greater than the former. Congratulations and God bless you. Dumbo, my name is Kirsten Dickerson. I'm the president of Tirza International, a longtime friend and partner of Home Care Fellowship. I send you greetings today from Texas and I want to say congratulations on 40 wonderful years of ministry. It has been such a joy to partner alongside Home Care for over 20 years to see lives restored and women rise above injustice to discover their God-given potential. It has been my joy to be a part of Home Care since around 2005 through Ecclesia Hollywood and then now as the president of Tirza. I want to congratulate Home Care for their 40th anniversary. I have been with my friend, Reverend Judy Mbugwa, and we have served the Lord together in many countries. But it is always a joy to minister at Home Care and to see the impact it has made on the community as well as the entire country. Congratulations. I first traveled to Nairobi in November of 2008 with a group from our church. Right away, I found myself falling in love with the people, the place, and the purposes of your ministry. I would like to introduce you to a friend of mine, Shelly Hill, who has been on one of our trips. She was especially blessed with her time with the Bethel sewing class. Students, Shelly would like to say a few words. Thanks, Yvonne. Yes, I so enjoyed my time with you a few years ago. And while I was there, I make a point to keep up with the good work Bethel Sewing Class is doing, and I'm very pleased to know it is growing. Praise be to God that even more students are benefiting from what they are learning, and upon graduation, can take the sewing machine they are given by the Home Care Spiritual Fellowship and go right to work to provide for their families. It is an honor for us to know you and add our support to the great work you are doing daily, all for the glory of God. Praise be to him and may the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Congratulations, Judy. <laughs> she stands out as one of the lead ministers and mothers in this country, not in Nairobi alone, but in this country and in the continent that has stood out for the gospel in the area of prayer, uh, in the area of uh, evangelism and social transformation. 
we have had the privilege over the years to be part of the home care and we do so willingly and gratefully because we have seen what God has done and what God continues to do through Judy and her team in home care. So I want to thank God for two things. That home care does what it does at the time where ministries um, and people that ought to be trusted are not always trustworthy. We are able to confidently uh, trust Judy with whatever support we are able to send to Kenya. Uh, when we are home, uh, we do go to Kibera with Judy, we go to home care, we go to retreat center, and so we've seen the wonderful work God has done. We've seen you sacrifice, mm -hmm. we've seen you pray for us mm -hmm. and with us, mm -hmm. we've seen you give uh, when we didn't have. So when we stand before the camera, we know you're saying what you've practiced. As we celebrate 40 years, we are celebrating the faithfulness of God. We are saying, see what the Lord has done. When we look behind our shoulders, we see 40 years of God's abundant provision. We see 40 years of God's abundant grace. We see 40 years of God's faithfulness. We just want to take this opportunity to sincerely thank God because indeed he has journeyed with us. Dr. Jude Bogwa, uh, your dear husband, Mr. Bogwa, whom I know has been a very uh, critical pillar of support quietly behind the scenes. Uh, the entire leadership of uh, home care, uh, your, your, your great children who have, been, who have been by your side in those 40 years. I'm proud of you, extremely proud of you. You've been a dear mother, a dear friend, and a dear mentor to me. You've worked with me for many, many years. And again, I see you like Deborah in the Bible, uh, the only lady judge in the Bible. In the context of, you know, the Bible that calls for us how Deborah was supporting uh, the generals in her generation to go out there and fight. You've been, a gen you've been there encouraging me. Uh, even as I've served in the institution, I've served in Cobank in an in incredible way. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for the partnership that we've had. Thank you for the opportunities for for being co-workers in the, in the vineyard. I know God has greater, greater frontiers ahead for you. May God continue to greatly establish you and your loved ones. Thank you very much. God bless you. Lauren, I so wish we could be with each of you today as you celebrate 40 years of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout Nairobi and all of Kenya, Africa, and the rest of the world. What a privilege it has been for Laura and me with Yvonne and our short-term missions teams to come to Kenya three different times over the years and work to help you father your ministries. Judy, we sincerely thank you for your 40 years of steadfast, courageous, and enduring leadership with home care. We are thankful that God called you to stand up and lead all of us where we are today. And we have faith that he will continue to provide you the vision and the special gifts of teaching and ministry for where we will be going next. The Second Presbyterian Kenya Missions Team sends God's richest blessings to each of you today as you celebrate. And we cannot wait to return to Kenya soon. We send hugs, love, and prayers today and always until we're together again in your beautiful Nairobi. Bye-bye. Hope y'all have a great time. We're thinking of you. Bye-bye. Blessings. On behalf of Second Presbyterian Church, we'd like to offer our heartfelt congratulations to Judy, to her family, to your team, to the volunteers, to everyone who's been engaged in this last 40 years of the Ministry of Home Care Spiritual Fellowship. When I think of the way you serve women and children, different people in need, different people who've been through very difficult circumstances, I see a manifestation, really, of the incarnational work of Jesus Christ our Lord, because he came to care for those who were in need, those who had been beaten up by this life, and announced to them that God loves them and cares for them and has a restorative purpose for their lives. So Judy, we thank God for the 40 years that you've been ministering and look forward to seeing what God is gonna do in the 40 years to come. May God bless you and the entire family of Home Care Spiritual Fellowship. Wow, it's already 40 years of doing ministry, impacting lives, changing families, bringing joy into marriages, ensuring that families are working in the plan of God, 
Mama, Dr. Reverend Judy Mbugwa, I salute you. You are a legend and a signature of God's grace in the life of a woman. On behalf of myself and Winnesta's generation, I wish Home Care Spiritual Fellowship a beautiful, wonderful 40 years anniversary. We want to extend to you our greetings, but we also celebrate with you the 40th anniversary of home care. I'm especially thankful through the AD2000 movement that I met Judy Bagwa. It's a long time ago now, and it was a relationship and a partnership that was very important, I believe, for both of us. I wish I could be with you at this time. I have been there in your office, and we counted a privilege to raise funds and try to get some funding to all the amazing ministry that you are involved in there in home care. Each one of you involved in this are like the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10. Only heaven will tell the story and provide you your reward. One of the things I just want to say is consist consistency. You've been very, very consistent. Amen. Uh, you've remained with the family. Mm -hmm. you've, you've really focused on just bringing up. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. and, that, and I really thank God that you dropped the word ladies now and it's mm -hmm. everybody. You yeah, took the whole family. That's yeah. why we changed. We yeah. said it's the whole family. The whole family. So it is home care. It is home care. Fellowship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like your focus. Mm -hmm. I really, really like your focus. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Jeff Johnson, the president of International Needs USA. And I just want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to you, Reverend Judy, and to the staff of home care ministries as you celebrate 40 years of serving the nation and the people of Kenya. You know, every week I look forward to receiving your ministry reports, the stories of people's lives being changed, the stories of transformation, the stories of in great courage and obedience to the call of God on your lives. It's truly inspiring. Hello and happy 40th anniversary to the Home Care Spiritual Fellowship. My name is Samuel Achira, commonly known as Sami. I'm excited because I am a beneficiary and as I await my graduation in November, I'm so excited. And this day I want to celebrate this ministry. And um, I remember back in 2009 when I first encountered the Home Care Spiritual Fellowship. I was still a young kid. I met it through the Bible clubs on Saturdays. But then in August, when there was a camp, I met Reverend Judy Bogua, who we became friends during the camp. And she took me in as a grandson from then. So in, from 2011, I've been living with them in their home in Karen, which is very profound. And um, this opportunity of just being one of the people who are benefiting is very key to me. And um, I've always wanted to become a pastor. And uh, the opportunity of just living with the Bugwas, being in a priest's house, has been an eye-opener, and I really thank God for this opportunity. It is said that life begins at 40. Indeed, if this is so, the story of home care has just but only begun. We have celebrated what God has done, but many more horizons lie ahead of us. Today, we look back with gratitude. There are many, many things I would like to thank God for, but uh, simply, I would like, first of all, to thank God for all the souls that have been saved, all the families that have been transformed. We used to have dinners, that we would have dinners uh, twice a year, and we would bring the cream of Nairobi, and many, many, many people got saved, including my own husband. So I, that is one thing that I want to thank God for, that through the prayers of home care, many, many people got saved. Then secondly, the transformation that we have brought to Kebera. Even the government has recognized the work that we've done to keep in Kibera because so many women, so many children have been changed. Then thirdly, the fact that home care is not only going to be fad racing, we are not going to do that forever. By the grace of God, now we have our own retreat center, our own property on Gong Road where we have our offices, but a retreat center that will be bringing income so that we are going to be self-sustaining. God works through people. And I pray that as you listen, you've listened, you've gotten excited, you've gotten encouraged, and you've gotten inspired to step out in your own way to do what God might be calling you to do. For us, we, are, we really believe in God's word. And you know, God's word in Isaiah says something very interesting. He says, forget 
the former things. It says do not dwell in the past. It is easy to have a celebration like this and dwell on what we have done. And it becomes the only thing we talk about. No, God says do not dwell in the past. He says, I am doing a new thing. And he says if you're looking at the past, you will not perceive it. And as long as there is a family somewhere that has not been touched by the gospel, that has not been transformed, then our work is not complete. And so we will continue in this journey. We will continue in this work. And we will continue to seek to do what God has called us to. At the moment, our key focus and the area that we are inviting you to pray with us, to partner with us, is that we need to have certain tools, certain assets that will allow us to grow in the future. And we want to put up a ministry center. You see, a center where there are auditoriums that we can invite people in to worship, to fellowship, to hear God's word. We want this ministry center to have training rooms where we can bring the women that you saw into a good space where they can be taught, taught about dressmaking, about different other uh, skills that will allow them to be able to look after their families. As they look on to the next 40 years, this team can only but give thanks for his goodness and entrust their lives to the immeasurable grace of the Lord. Hope TV is where you look and live with an excellent selection of the best Christian programming consisting of local and international content of inspirational stories, talk shows, Bible commentary, youth, health shows, children entertainment, contemporary gospel music, extended times of worship, live broadcast, news, movies, drama, Christian ministry programs and so much more. Hope TV is another quality service from Christ is the Answer Ministries with over 45% of authentic and credible local content every week. Hope TV is a sister station to Hope FM, Kenya's leading Christian radio station with footprints across the country. Tune in to Hope TV, where you look and live.
Amen. Amen. Please put your hands together. That was absolutely amazing and incredible and unforgettable testimony of what God has done. Some of the people who appeared in that video are with us. We just want to once again um, recognize Justice Musinga who joined us. Uh, he he was, uh, wasn't here when we recognized all the others uh, who joined us. Uh, my good friend, uh, the Reverend uh, Charles Obara, who is the pastor of... Uh, our dear sister, the Reverend Dr. Judy Mboga, good to have you with us. There's several other pastors from CTAM who I recognize and see. Uh, Pastor um, Bandu, Pastor Mwai, various others, Pastor, and, and uh, I think it's Nyari, Nyarangi, who is also around as well. Glad to have you all. This took us about 40 minutes, and we want to recognize and give uh, an absolute warm round of applause to Charles Kilonzo and his team for putting together this amazing documentary. God bless you, Charles. Excellent, excellent job. And you were sitting for 40 minutes, so I'm going to ask you to stand up. It didn't feel like 40 minutes, I'm sure. Let's just stand and give God the glory for this amazing record of 40 years. And the reason I'm going to keep you standing is because I want us to recognize a very special group of people who were in the video as well. We're going to have a presentation now from uh, the uh, orphans and vulnerable children, this next batch, this next group. They're coming to give a, a, a very special presentation. We just ask that you remain standing as they come in, and we invite them to now come to the stage. Let's just give them a warm round of applause as they join us. Please do come in, kids. They're still coming. Amen. 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 This is our future here at HSF. And we want to say thank God for the opportunity to make a difference in their lives again. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Wakati wa Mungu kumpata kila mtu wekuwa na subira hadi gaya kwenye shajara Wakati wa Mungu ukikuchilia mazingira sikitu kapinge Wakati wa Mungu ukikuchilia mwanadamu ni nani api Goja, 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 goja,
Amen. We can do better than that. Thank you so much to these amazing young people. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, Patrick, for your direction. He watches them. That's the young man, Patrick. You can wave to the congregation. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. It's now time to hear from the visionary and the founder and the lady who brings us all here together for no other reason than to give glory to God for what he's done over 40 years. Uh, please let's be upstanding as we welcome the Reverend Dr. Judy Mbogwa, who will come to give her address and welcome our keynote speaker as well. She's coming with her husband. Amen. Welcome, Mom. Karibu sana. You're moving as fast as you did 40 years ago, huh? Almost. <laughs> God bless you. You're welcome. Am I on now? Thank you. I said I've asked my husband to start with me because this is a very, very emotional moment for me. But this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I was asked first of all to introduce some of the guests. And this is a very, very difficult task because all of you are guests. And all of you are very, very important guests. Brother Martin, one as if you get the go. Amen. But as if you were so, all of you are very important. The Archbishop has left. And uh, through him, I want to acknowledge all the clergy, all the ministers of the gospel. Would you please stand? Let me just acknowledge you, all the clergy that are here. Let's give the Lord a big clap for the clergy. Bwana as if you Bwana as if you among the clergy, I want to recognize my bishop. He's been my bishop for many, many years, my bishop and my friend. I want to acknowledge uh, my bishop, Bishop Justin, 
uh, the one who left is the archbishop. This is Bishop Justin. And Justin and I ha and uh, Gladys have done ministry together for a long time. I also want to acknowledge uh, Reverend Annette Taylor. Annette, oh, she's outside, she's coming. Uh, while she's coming, I want to acknowledge, oh, oh, okay, Annette, please come a little bit near where people can see you. Annette Taylor has come all the way from the US for this function, just four days. <laughs> She's been my friend from the days of Pakwa. We met through Pakwa. And I went and preached in, uh, in Sierra, I mean, in uh, their country. And uh, from that time, we became very, very good friends. And we have been ministering together. She has moved to the US from Liberia, but she came from the US for this function. Annette, I honor you. And then I have a disciple uh, that I also met through Pakwa. Who has, turned, who has become a bishop now, Bishop uh, Patience Hove from uh, um, Zimbabwe. I think when you get here, you get to forget names. Zimbabwe. The others are not, I'm not going to mention their names, but allow me to mention two more, three more. Pastor Tony Kiama, because Tony is in the Board of Home Care. Then I want to mention Bishop Mwambili, because Bishop Mwambili is such a son. I mean, he says, anything you say, ma'am. You saw, I love the way he, he brought the trumpet. I was just in tears. And then I also want to an, uh, honor my own uh, pastor right now, Pastor Omara. Amen. Amen. Uh, Kwame Rubadiri, who is our MC, is also a pastor. And so for all the clergy, please allow me not to mention you by name. You may be seated. Bana Asifue. Then I want to introduce the learned judges. We have two today. We have uh, uh, Justice uh, Lee Mudoga, who introduced himself a bit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I may be calling him again for another reason, so let him sit down. We have Justice uh, uh, Daniel Musinga and Lily Musinga, who are members of our current Bible study groups. Please stand. <laughs> Amen. He is holding two hearts because he's in our Bible study. And we have Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, James and Joyce Odudo, who are also members of the Bible study. Please stand. And I think Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Wambua is also here from the Bible study. If you are here, quickly. Okay. Thank you so much. Allow me to introduce us from the corporate. And from the corporate, I want to start with my son, my friend. Uh, I don't know. I can add so many names to Dr. Muriuki and his wife, Joyce. Please stand. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we will be launching our book a little bit later. Please keep standing. I want, I want to say something when you're standing because, because I want people to clap for you. He will be launching our book a little bit later. But... If you talk about a true friend, a true son, someone you can cry, just call and say, I want this amount of money for me and Dr. Muriuki. That's what he is to me. Anytime, when we were buying the retreat center and we almost went crazy when we had to pay 600,000 per month, I called on him. When we needed a loan for 27 million, he didn't even ask me for the title deed. Dr. Moriuki, I honor you from my heart. And you know he cannot do that without his wife Joyce. And not only that, Dr. Moriuki is a senior CEO in Cooperative Bank of Kenya. But he's also my son. And in that capacity from time to time, he said, we a very nice envelope, and says, Mom, buy soup. You are duvu. He even writes that in Kikuyu, buy soup. You know, many people give men money to the ministry, but Dr. Moriyuki, from time to time, will make sure I'm having soon soup. Sons that are here, I want you to honor your mothers. Do it when they are alive. Don't give good speeches when they are dead. Dr. Moriuki, you represent a good son. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And because you are a son, still keep standing until I tell you to sit. 
because you are a son, I want you to stand with my sons, Robert and his wife, Alex and his wife, and Kahara and his wife. They have become brothers and sisters. You can see my sons, our family there. They have become brothers and sisters through this relationship that God has bonded us together. God bless you. Now you can see it. Amen. Amen. I want to honor Jennifer Karina. Jennifer Karina is the chairperson of Kenya Reinsurance. Hallelujah. And this girl, we've done things together. We have written books and encouraged each other about writing books. Jenny, I love you. I could say so much, but time will not allow me. Thank you so much. In this list, I also want to honor Dr. Kipata and his wife. Dr. Tafadari Stand. Uh, please come a little bit where people can see you. Dr. Kibata is one of the youngest top eye doctors. I can say so much about him. He's my eye doctor. And when I needed some very, very technical treatment, he said, Mom, I can't do it for you, but I'll organize for someone the best, my teacher in South Africa. And that's what he did. Daktari, I honor you. Give a big clap to Daktari. <laughs> Probably today I wouldn't be seeing you if it wasn't for him. <laughs> Not only that, but Doc takes care of home care children when they finish. Every other year he takes some and trains them in his office and employs them. Buona <laughs> And thirdly, he is treating Kraji free of charge. He's a, he's a young minister, he's a young doctor, but he believes in God. I love you, Dr. Dr. Tari. Thank you for allowing yourself to be my son. And he's also preaching with Robert and the team that is doing the media work. Oh my goodness, my time is so much gone. Okay, Media Hope FM, I want to bless you. Thank you. Especially Brother Mahugo and Sister Juliet Mahugo, who for various reasons were not able to come. Bwana Sifiwe. Then Sarah Kay, she is gone. Isn't she the best in, in worship? Hallelujah. She's also my spiritual daughter. When I call, she says, Mom, just mention the date. Bwana Sifiwe. Home care staff, you are the best. You can see the staff, they are wearing some beautiful clothes. God bless you. Bwana Sifiwe Sana. And then I've already said my family, the boys stood, the young men stood. So I want my daughters, my daughters in law and Esther, would you stand? I never call them my daughters in law. They are my daughters in love. Would you stand? Yeah, there they are. That is Jocelyn. That is Catherine. And Helen is somewhere. They are serving. God bless you. I love you. Then uh, I want to introduce so that he can stand our speaker. Because when I finish, I'll sit down and you'll come. Our speaker for today is uh, Mr. Uh, Jeff Johnson, the president and CEO of International Needs all the way in USA. And he came today for that very reason. God bless you. Bana Sifiwe. And then he has brought, uh, he's come together with Mark Ismod, who is the Director of Development International Needs. And they came to see the work that is happening and to celebrate with us. God bless you. For those who are out in the overflow, for those who are watching us live on the Hope FM, Hope TV, and for those who are on YouTube, I just want to say God bless you. Bana Sifiwe. I've also received uh, uh, greetings from the First Lady of Kenya. She could not come, but we prayed with her many times, and she sent a word that she's unable to come, but she's with us. Bana Sifuye. Finally, I want to ask all the ladies of home care, please stand. Please stand. Uh, you're sitting there, most of you. Please stand, because I want to honor you. Amen. Hallelujah. These are the ladies. 
that were able to get in. We couldn't get in everybody. We only could fit in 100 people here, and we had over 500 who wanted to come. One little girl called Angel was left crying because she couldn't come. I honor you. I couldn't do this without you. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Bible says in Acts 2.17, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. As we stand here today to celebrate 40 years of home care ministry, 40 is a very important number in the Bible, and it's mentioned 140 times. For example, Moses and the children of Israel, in both cases, they were being prepared for great conquest of the land they would possess. I believe there is first, sorry, I believe in that, these first 40 years of home care ministry that they were preparatory for what God is going to do through this ministry. And then I want to say that today is 28th of August. This is very significant because 58 years ago, on August 28, 1963, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. delivered the famous message, I have a dream. On the 28th of August, just a day like today, which that speech is widely regarded as one of the most comparing and persuasive speeches of the 20th century. And so, today being 28th, I feel there is something the Lord is saying. And during the 17 minutes of his speech, he quoted at least four times from the word of God. And I believe, therefore, that it is not a coincidence that we are sharing dreams on the same day with a great man like Martin Luther King Jr., 28th of August. Dreams are associated with the night time. And my message, my brief message is, dreamers never stop dreaming. Dreamers never stop dreaming. And so dreams are associated with nighttime. Night dreams could be also associated with many things, including a heavy meal. But dreams dreamt during the daytime are very clear and never forgotten. Sometimes they are called visions. February 1980, I had a dream. This was after, like I shared on the uh, documentary, after the challenge of loneliness, while I was still in a big church, crowded, but I felt lonely because I couldn't fit in any of the fellowships, not the widows, not the couples, and not the single mothers. I started to dream of a group of women who would meet and pray for their families, particularly husbands and children who are not born again. A dream without a plan is just a wish. As you have seen in the documentary, we went to work, and this is no longer a dream. It has become reality. 40 years ago, after my dream, which was during the day, and dreaming in the day is different from daydreaming, I invited a number of women to our home in Kabete to pray and plan. There were just a few, but in Zechariah 4.10, the Bible says that we should not despise the day of small beginnings. We had a dream that we would go to heaven with our, with our husbands and our children,
seen our children come to salvation. We have seen family members delivered from alcohol, as Alex shared, and other captivities. Some of those we started with are here, and I would like to introduce them. My auntie, my biological auntie who brought my grandmother, who prophesied over my life. Auntie Dolkas, are you here? Auntie Dolkas, okay, she may be coming later. Sister Eunice Gabibi, please stand. If I call your name, please stand. Sister Lois Mwangi, uh, Mrs. Angela Gabi, and Mrs. Veronica Kamau. Those four were there. February 1980. Hallelujah. Give them a big clap. Please keep standing. <laughs> As we honor them, I want to honor them who others who are with us and they are not with us today. I want to remember our sister, Damaris Mushiro, our sister, Bill Haderito, our sister Charity Mudoga, our sister Hilda Gebenji, and our brother Samuel Karaja. Our book is dedicated to this. Heroes and heroines who have gone to be with the Lord. I have mentioned Samuel Karaja, one man whom we called home care husband, because he was always with us until last December. Yes, give him a clap until last December when he went to be with the Lord. So the daughters of our sister Damaris Mushiro are here to represent their mother. Please stand. Angela and Susan, please stand. They are representing Mama Mushiro. And then I've said that I'll mention uh, Mr. Mudoga, Justice Mudoga again, please stand. He is representing my deputy of 25 years who went to be with the Lord two years, three, two years ago. And so this is the team that I want you to give a studying ovation. Please, I mean, clap for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And while you're standing, can we observe a minute of silence in honor of the departed servants? Thank you. You may be seated. Over the years, God gave us new dreams, and with each new dream, he gave us power to implement. God gave us a dream to look, up, to look after HIV women, and with that, we started the Fadiri group that you have seen. Today, we have a class of 45 who graduate every four years. Then, they go home when they are stronger, because when they come here, they are so, so weak, and we have to take care of them. God gave us a dream to educate the needy, and with that, came the orphaned and vulnerable children whom you have seen. Today we are educating 180 of them from kindergarten to university. Right now we have 19 students in the university doing different, taking different courses, passing with straight A's from Kebera. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And we have encouraged them that don't let Kebera define you. You are a great servant of God. God gave us a vision for Bible clubs, and you have seen the children. We feed them. We take care of their spiritual needs, and we work with pastors in Kebera. We have seven churches that we are working with so that we can reach 600 children. We feed, and we clothe, and we pray for them. God bless you. Amen. God gave us a dream to build a place of retreat for prayer, and that has become our prayer center in Karen. And I want to say publicly, try us if you are looking for a retreat center. It's the best in Kenya. 
If you are disappointed, we will refund your money. <laughs> God gave us a dream to evangelize to the nation. And with that came our radio and television ministries. And I want to honor Moniki, Robert, Dr. Tari, Dr. Kerao, and all those of you who are ministering. I used to do television and radio, but these young men have, done, have taken radio and have lifted it higher above anything I would ever have thought. God gave us a dream to evangelize, and we are faithful. Martin Ruther concluded his speech stating that 1963 was not an end, but a beginning. And he was right so much that his speech has been quoted everywhere. I want to say, like in Joshua 4.12, Caleb says, now therefore, give me this mountain. He was 85, I'm only 74. So I'm asking the Lord, for a new mountain. 40 years ago, we were younger, but today we are better. 40 years ago, we were strong, but 40 years later, we are equipped. We know how to handle situations so we can take a new mountain. Hallelujah. So as I conclude, as we celebrate the 40 years, anniversary of God's faithfulness. I believe that like Moses, the first 40 years of home care were preparatory. These first four years are not an end, but a beginning. There is so much more that needs to be done. There are children to feed. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have never personally gone to Kibera, I challenge you. I challenge you. You will be born again the second time if you go to Kebera. There is so much need. There is so much work to be done. There are children to feed and educate, men and women to train, vulnerable women to support, and prisons to visit. Most importantly, the gospel to be shared. And Saying this, I want to introduce, as I sit down, my new deputy, Agnes. Agnes Nyamo, please stand. Agnes has been such a wonderful deputy. She took over after Mrs. Mudoga, and she arranged the trip to the prisons. And the prison officials were calling me at night, and they said, what home care did is memorable. Thank you, Agnes. I want also to recognize, as you're studying Agnes, my other lieutenants, Janetta Mwangi. She's the chair for Imuru. No, she's the secretary for Imuru and has been there for over 20 years directing those women. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in Imuru, we are feeding 150 grandmothers. You saw them. The video couldn't say everything. These are grandmothers whose children have died of HIV AIDS. So the grandmothers are taking care of children. And Janetta is in charge of that. Janetta, why did you sit down? We want to clap for you. <laughs> then we have Dr. Sarah Mushai. Dr. Sarah, she's taking care of the Thika region and they are doing fantastic things. God bless you, Dr. Tari. You will read a little bit more from the book about these people because time will not allow. And finally, I want to recognize my sister Tabitha and the group for Nakuru. Hallelujah. <laughs> they drove this morning from Nakuru just to be with us. Tabitha, God bless you. You are doing a great job. Yes, there is a lot of work to be done. Let's give them a big clap. And so as we continue, you may be seated now. As I sit down, I want to say we cannot continue without your support. And my husband asked me specifically that he doesn't want to start. He just wants to talk. 
He just wants to start with me. But because I'm here and he can't refuse when I'm here, <laughs> I want to ask him to say hi. Hi. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say. It is wonderful for this, for what is happening here. I must say that I'm glad, I don't know how to express it, for those who have been uh, supporting my wife. She could not make it when she was alone. Yes. But with all these people, she has made it. Yes. So thank you very much for what you have done. Amen. 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 That's a good word. That's a good word, my dear. And so we are going to sit down, and I'm saying the best is here to come. Not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. Amen. Amen. And now as I sit, I have a very difficult announcement to make. That we are not going to give you lunch. We prepared. We got a good hotel. We got everything. But because we had to register this ministry with the government, they advised us not to serve lunch. They said it's very unadvisable. That when we take out our masks, that's when people get sick. So, as a mother, those of you who have come to my home, you know I love to entertain. I was really preparing a good meal for all of us. So, please excuse us for that. God bless you. Should I introduce the speaker? I have already introduced Jeff, so please come. I said Jeff is the chairperson, the CEO of International Needs, who have stood with us for many, many years. I served in the board of International Needs for six years, and when my term was over, I asked them, could you help us do something? And they have been with us. Come on, John, Je Jeff, come on, come on, come on. We want you to come. Thank you. It is a great honor to be here this morning. And before I let uh, Reverend Judy and her husband have a seat, I want to read to you some greetings from the, the board of directors from INUSA. I need to visit your doctor because I still need my spectacles. <laughs> Reverend Judy, warm greetings and abundant congratulations from the International Needs United States Board of Directors and to our brothers and sisters in Christ on this occasion of celebrating 40 years of ministry. When God called you to begin this ministry 40 years ago, you were determined to rise up and go forth with prayer, love, compassion, and concern for the disadvantaged in your community. You have taken on this work with strategy, creativity, wisdom, tenaciousness, and the excellence worthy of our Lord's work. You have looked into the eyes of children, women, and families and seen them not for their condition or their circumstances, but for who they are in Jesus for their value and potential. You have given them the gospel of hope that they are downtrodden but not defeated, disadvantaged but having power, abused but resilient. You have changed the course of thousands of lives through the power of God's hope pouring out from you. Reverend Judy, you and the staff and volunteers of Home Care Spiritual Fellowship are our valued partners and we are privileged to have been partners in the Lord's work for over a decade. Now we pray for your future from Ephesians 3, 20 through 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him a glory through the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, Reverend Judy. We have a small token to commemorate this time. 
On behalf of International Needs USA, I just give you this certificate of appreciation of our support, our partnership, our love, and our inspiration. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for the work that you've done and that you are going to continue to do. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Would you like to give Reverend Judy and home care an anniversary present? I think we all would. And as I was reflecting this morning, I think one of the best anniversary presents that we could give Reverend Judy, and I think she would say a hearty amen to this, is that each and every one of you, each and every one of us, including me, will go after the promise that God has given us. That as Reverend Judy has gone after the promise God has given her 40 years ago, I know in her heart she would want us with that same tenacity to go after the promise that God has given each and every one of us because he has given us a promise. We are on this earth for a purpose. And I just want to share a few thoughts this morning one in tribute to home care and Reverend Judy, but also as an exhortation and an encouragement to all of us to possess our own promise. The Lord has given us a promise. But here's the thing. He has said, here is your promise. I'm giving it to you. It is yours. But now he says something very important. He says, now go possess it. There is a very well-known sculptor and artist named Michelangelo. His works are all over Europe in the museums and the cities. And, and one of the things Michelangelo said was this. He said, the greater danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving the mark. There's truth in that statement, and of course, whenever you hear truth in a statement, you can always find that truth in Scripture. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Reverend Judy had a dream, she had a vision, and she had a promise from God. And she cultivated that promise in her heart. It was not always easy. We celebrate today, but I'm sure, Reverend Judy, you could tell many stories of many, many difficult times. Possessing a promise is never easy, but it is guaranteed. If the promise is from the Lord, it is never easy, but it is guaranteed. I want to share just a few verses of Scripture. There's a great story about possessing the promise that God gave to the Israelites. And of course, you know the story. They're getting ready to cross over into um, the promised land. And Moses is passing the mantle to Joshua. And you know, three times in Joshua chapter 1, he is exhorted to be strong and courageous. I say again, be strong and courageous. And a third time, be strong and courageous. Because they were about to pass into their promise, but they had to possess it. Well, if you do a little studying, that, that phrase, be strong and courageous, is actually known as the Hebrew war cry. It's called Kazakh and Amats. And that's what Kazakh, this is what Kazakh and Amats means. Rock-like strength and conviction, tenacity of soul, resolute for the glory of God. And Amat says, rushing headlong into battle without pausing, to consider the impossibilities. Reverend Judy, you have possessed Kazakh and Amats over 40 years. And I know she would say to all the rest of you, Kazakh Amats, possess your promise. Go headlong with a tenacity of soul because God has given it to you. But now you must go and take it. 
there's a few things I think that we can learn. If you back up the story very quickly, I want to share just four with you that I think are a tribute to Reverend Judy and home care, but also an encouragement for us as we possess our own promises. It's the story of the spies first going out into the promised land as they were getting ready to cross over. And these spies went out into the land. They checked it out. They came back and they gave a report. And of course, you know the story. Twelve went out. Ten came back with a very negative report. Two came back with a positive report, Caleb and Joshua. And here's the story in Numbers. Numbers chapter 13, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. In possessing your promise, the first thing you need to realize, don't give back what God has given you. It says right in that verse, which I, the Lord, am giving you. Difficult times come. Challenges come. Hardships come. It demands perseverance. And you know, far too often, I have seen people give back their promise from God. It breaks my heart when the time gets tough. Don't ever give back what God has given you. And it, and it goes on. I'm going to pick up the story in verse 27. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But, oh my goodness, that word. The people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the sea. You can hear everybody, the fear that's being, being whipped up. But then in verse 30, then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we certainly can do it. Never give back what God has promised you. And number two, what you need to realize is oftentimes your fruit and your promise are in the context of giants. There will always be giants in the land. Your fruit will never be just by itself with no resistance. You are called to go in, possess your promise, to receive your fruit, but you must deal with the giants because they are always there. Your fruit is always in the context of giants. But God will overcome the giants. So you can accept your fruit. The story goes on. I'm going, to, I'm going to pick it up. The land we explore devours those living in us. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And we looked the same to them. It's one of the saddest scriptures. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes. That's a trap we can fall into. God's given us a promise. We see the giants. We see the fruit. And then we seem so small. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes. But did you know a fact about a grasshopper? A grasshopper can jump 20 times farther then its biological size would allow it to jump. With God, with the power of the Holy Spirit, as you go in to possess your promise, you can jump 20 times farther than what your body size would allow. You can do miraculous things because God has given it to you. So possess your promise. You are not a grasshopper. You are not a grasshopper. When the Lord is the Lord of you, you are not a grasshopper. And finally, in chapter 14, verse 24, it's a great line. It says this, but because my servant Caleb has a different spirit 
and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it. Caleb had a different spirit. He gave a different report. And the fourth thing I would encourage you with as you possess your promise, give a different report. Don't give the report about the giants. Give the report about the fruit. Give the report about the promise of God. That's what Reverend Judy has done for 40 years. She gave the report about the promise of God, not about all the giants in the land that she had to conquer. She did not go and just talk about all the difficulties, all the hardships, all the obstacles in Kibera, all the difficulties and everything coming against her. She gave the report about God's promise. I love the, the story of David and Goliath. Because when David slew Goliath, it says in Scripture, and all the other Philistines turn and ran. Don't shrink from your giant. Slay your giant and possess your promise. Kazakh and Amatz. Mark chapter 11 says this. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, let's underline that. Whatever you ask for in prayer. Believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. It doesn't say whatever you ask for, believe and receive it, and it's yours. It says whatever you have asked for in prayer, in connection, in relationship, and in conversation with God. That's the important piece. If God has promised it to you, believe that you have received it. Now, some of you might say, well, yeah, but my circumstances surely don't show that I'm receiving it. It's present and it will happen. I love what Watchman Nee in his book, The Normal Christian Life, said. When life experiences don't seem to match up with your promises, what contradicts the word of God is a lie from the devil. It may be a real fact in our senses, but God has stated a greater fact before which the others must eventually yield. For 40 years, Reverend Judy has had that spirit of Caleb. She has given a different report. She has had the Kazak and Amats of tenacity of soul to go after and possess what God has said is yours. And I want to challenge you this morning. I found my own self as I was preparing this, as I was learning about Reverend Judy's ministry. I found my own spirit being stirred about the own pro my own promises that God has had in my own life. And, I've, and my own courage and my own strength and my own resolve has grown stronger because of it. Testimony, amen, means do it again. Let's do it again. Reverend Judy, I have a word for you. I was woken up in the middle of the night a, a few nights ago, and I was complaining to God about jet lag and all of those things. And why wouldn't he give me sleep? And, you know, I have a busy week and I should be getting sleep. And God, why are you not allowing me sleep? And I remembered my wife, who is a very powerful intercessor, would always say this to me if I couldn't sleep. Well, did you get up and pray? Maybe God wants to talk to you. So this time I'm like, all right, I will listen to my life, my wife. And I got up and I said, God, what are you trying to say to me? And Reverend Judy gave me the verses in Psalm 113, where it says, and he lifts the poor from the dust and raises the needy from the ash heap. And he seats them with princes, with the princes of his people. And I believe what God is saying to you, Reverend Judy, is for 40 years, you have lifted the poor from the dust and the needy from the ash heap. But just watch the next 40 years, because those that you have raised up, those that you have toiled for, you're going to begin to see them seated with princes, with the princes of their people. And so I just would ask you to pray with me. Just allow the Spirit of God to come and to just settle in you. 
You know, the other great thing about the Lord is he's the God of second chances. Maybe some of you have said, I've seen the giants. I felt like a grasshopper and I've given back my promise. I want you to know the Lord is saying, no, it's still there for you. It's right there. Go ahead, pick it up again. You will find me in it. Pick it up again. So I want to encourage all of you. If you've laid down your promise, pick it up again. Those of you that are still rushing headlong into possessing your promise. Know that God is with you. Lord, I pray a blessing over Reverend Judy. I pray a blessing over all the home care staff. God, we just celebrate with them the incredible ministry, all the thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands that they have impacted, Lord. We just thank you for that. And we pray a continued blessing as Reverend Judy gets ready to take her, her next mountain. I pray, God, that she would be full of Kazakh and Amats as much as she was before and for the rest of us, Father. We stand in tribute to Reverend Judy. We stand in tribute to what she has accomplished. And we say, we're going, Lord. We're going, Lord. We're going to take our own mountain. We're going to possess our own promise. We are not grasshoppers. We are going to move forward in victory. And we are going to have our own testimony to see, see what the Lord has done. So I pray for everyone here, everyone across the airways, everyone listening to this, that the spirit of Kasak and Amats would rise up within each one of us and we would go headlong into the battle to possess the promise that you have given us. And in Jesus' name I pray. Let's appreciate uh, Brother Jeff Johnson. I will not forget the words Hazak and Amatz anytime soon. And I appreciate that word. That word indeed was not just for mom, but for all of us here who hear what God is saying to our hearts at this season. God bless you and thank you so much for allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through you. We're now going to welcome the chairman of the committee that put all this together, my good friend, Anthony Moniki, to take us to the next half of this wonderful celebration. Welcome. Good afternoon. Have you been blessed? Have you seen what God has done? Then why won't you let us all just give him a hand clap. Let us celebrate the mighty and awesome things that God has done. As, you, as Reverend Kwame has said, my name is Anthony Mwaniki and I consider myself one of Reverend Judy Bogwa's sons. And like she says, when she calls, then our answer is, what do you want, mom? How can we help? And she, because she has been truly a blessing to us. Mine is really to, to talk about what next for home care. I liked the words that mom used, quoting from Martin Luther King, I have a dream. That is one of the speeches I love to listen to. And so I want to say that here at Home Care, we too have a dream. We have a dream that no woman living with HIV AIDS will have to live without food in her stomach, without her rent paid, without the things that she needs to build her family. We have a dream. We have a dream that no orphan or vulnerable child will have to sleep hungry or not go to school or feel that they have no future just because of the place and the circumstances of their birth. We have a dream. We have a dream that no young lady, no young man 
coming out of Kibra will have to say that I have no hope, I have no future, I have no direction, I cannot get things done. Because we will make sure that they have skills, they have networks, they have the resources that we need. We have a dream. But like Paul said when he wrote to the church in Philippi, writing as like he was from the prison cells, after years of ministry where he had planted 20 churches, an excess of 20 churches, where he had healed many, he would go to write these words, and I read. He says, I do not say that I have already achieved these things, or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess the perfection which Christ first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on one thing, forgetting the past and looking to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race to receive the heavenly prize that God, through Christ Jesus, has called us. So here at Home Care, we have celebrated great things, but we are leaving them behind. We will remember them and glorify God, but we are saying that we must press on. Our face is set like flint, looking to the future, and we will press on. We will press on until Kibra has been changed from a place where all we think about is that it is full of disease, it is full of crime, it is full of failure. But it will be the address that people will look to own property. That is what we will press on to, and that's what we dream. But like as mom says, dreams without plans, and dare I say dreams without resources, are but dreams. And so we have a plan, and with which we ask you to partner with us. Plans to, that will require your time, that may, will require our time and our resources. And so we ask, as you have partnered with us to get us here, and mom said this is, was the preparation stage. Now it's time, as the business people say, it is time to scale. And so we ask that you would partner with us because there's a lot of work to be done. There are mountains to be taken. There are giants to be conquered. As we have been told, we, we need to be strong and we need to be courageous. But we also need the resources that God has put in our hands. And so if you wish to partner with us, uh, we will have a book outside where you can uh, put down your names to become part of the ministry. But you may also wish to partner with us by giving a gift. And so our ushers who are standing at the doors will have an envelope, which if you do want to give today, you can. And we'll also do have um, a pay bill if you want to give via M-Pesa. Uh, the pay bill number is 688-698. The account is 40th. 688 Six nine eight account six pay bill number six eight eight six nine eight six eight eight six nine eight account number account fortieth. Whatever you give, as you have heard, will go to raise up the young children to bless the mothers. And account 40th, 40th, as for 40th anniversary. So we thank you. We now want to go on to the next stage. As mom said, the, a book has been written that captures all that God has done over 40 years of ministry. And so we want to invite you as we go out. Dr. Morioki will lead us together with Reverend Kwame, and we will launch this new book, and we will, as we celebrate, uh, what God has done and thereafter, even though we are not able to prepare a proper meal as we would have loved to, mom has said, because of protocols, we want to cut and share a cake together. So I will just invite you to stand. I'll say a short prayer and then we can go and launch the book. Remember, we have a dream. Father, your word tells us that in the last days you will allow us to dream dreams and to see visions. That you'll pour out your spirit on all 
flesh. We pray that here in this sanctuary and across this nation, your Holy Spirit will be poured out. That truly we will dream dreams. Dreams that are from you to transform families, to transform communities, to transform nations. Father, I pray that you will give us visions of the things that you want to be done here in this country and beyond. So thank you that we have so much to celebrate. And as we go to launch a book that captures the things that you have done, Father, we want to hold on to the word that is in Isaiah 43. Father, we want to say we will forget the former things. Father, we say we will not dwell in the past because we know that you are doing a new thing and we want to behold it. Not only to behold it, we want to be part of it. So take us as your partners. Use us as vessels of honor for noble purposes. That in our, when we do meet you, that we will be able to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servants. For Reverend Dr. Judim Bogwa, Dad, Mr. Richard Bogwa, the entire leadership of the Home Care Spiritual Fellowship, we pray, Lord, pour out your blessing. On all the founders, Lord, bless them, for they have refreshed many. Jehovah, refresh them. For everyone who has given, you, Lord, who is the debtor to no man. Your word says you're a debtor to no man. Bless them and refresh them. And so we celebrate you and we honor you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And God's people say, Amen. 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 So we'll, Reverend Kwame will guide us Amen. as we go out to launch the book. The book launch will take place out here in the parking lot. We ask that you still wear your mask and you still socially distance even in the parking lot. And that uh, you allow space for uh, Dr. Mariuki, who is going to be leading us in that. And also to our honored uh, guests and honorees today, um, Reverend Judy and Uncle Richard, that they also have room to, we'll allow them to come out first. And then uh, the central section will, will follow. And then the section to my extreme left will follow next. Uh, and as you come out, please remember to socially distance. Thank you. Please feel free to fill up the space here in the parking lot. Thank you for coming out in an orderly way. And just feel free to just fill up the space all the way around here behind the tree and just maintain social distancing. Uh, please, please come around here so that those who are following will find space uh, as they come out as well. Uh -huh. All the way around to, uh, to my right, you will have ample view of the, of the launch. All the way around here. Thank you. Please continue to come around all the way to the to behind me. Thank you. Please keep moving around. You can come and fill the space behind me as well to allow room for those who are coming out.
all the way around and you will have a, a great view of the entire exercise. <laughs> all right, we have a quorum. So we're going to call upon Dr. Gideon Maruki to lead us through this exercise. Over to you, Doc. Hello, uh, lovely Dr. Judy Bogua, uh, uh, Mr. Richard Bogua, our dad, the, the members of the clergy, honorable justices, and all of us who are here today, uh, my pastors from SITAM, a great ministry that ministers to me. Uh, I, I met uh, um, Dr. Bogua in 2001. I was, I was, I was, uh, I, I recall I was in the, I was the deacon and the treasurer of the church at Sitam, then serving under Pastor White as Pastor White then was heading over to, to, to Bishop Adoyo who was here with us. And uh, Dr. Bogwa was, uh, I believe, in the elders court then. And uh, I, I just been asked to serve as a, as a team leader, as a CEO at Cooperative Bank at a very tender age. And, 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 and mom, you reached out to me. You, you came over and uh, you just called me and we just met briefly. Then you called me and said, I would want to come over to the office and pray with you. And she, she laid a couple of truths upon my life. As a young man then, in that one, I was, I was a minister of the gospel in that office. And that God would use me in that office within cooperative bank. Uh, I think the last is in the public domain about the journey that we have had as an institution, as Cobank, and what God has enabled us to do from an institution that, that was in huge losses. I think we were number 47 out of 48 banks in the industry then, to where we, have be, where we are today, one of the largest banks in the region today in the journey over the 20 years. Thank you so much for the encouragement that you've been to me. Uh, and... Uh, it's incredible. It's really incredible. Not only has she encouraged me in the context of uh, serving in the corporate space and mentoring me over the years and praying over me, but also she has encouraged me to reach out in the out here, you know, in terms of partnerships out here. Uh, let me remind you, you encouraged me to go to AIU to serve in the governing council where I took from Valentine. Uh, Valentine is here. We served. Valentine was the chair. I took over from Valentine in Toho. We, we did some fundraiser for AIU. We started an endowment fund for the university. And, and I can only thank God. I can't forget you and invited me actually to Evangelical Alliance of Kenya. And we, some couple of years back, we did a fundraiser to revive EAK when Bishop, Bishop uh, Mark Karioki was there as the chair and uh, Dr. Uh, Bishop Oginde was the deputy chair and we, we encouraged us. And we went and we did a fundraiser for EAK just to revive the, what and to, to revamp it and what they were doing. Uh, I could go on and on. I could go on and on. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, uh, Reverend Kwame, Reverend Jude encouraged me on the Heaven's Get House Frame drama. And three years back, we, when I saw the, the Heaven's Get House Frame drama and the impact it has in terms of evangelism, we, I, I, I approached the leadership of the church, Bishop Oginda, then I asked him, Bishop, why can't we make this drama a full-time activity? And Bishop told me, no, it can be done, but there are budget, budget implications. We need a truck, we need a bus, we need one, two, three. And I was able to go to my board, and my board, I went with a what? Um, we called it a youth empowerment program, and we bought the equipment, and that drama has been learning for the last three years. It, it has gone to over 200, I think, and 200, 250 schools. Over 300 people have seen it. Uh, over 150,000 150, young people have committed their life to Christ. You won't see Coban Kenwa, you'll see Sitam, because it's Sitam that runs with it. But the reality is, courtesy of Sitam, Coban finances that project behind the scenes, and we finance the program. Uh, I can't finish without mentioning last year. Uh, last year we, we had COVID, and we, had all, we were all challenged and wondering what we needed to do. Again, thank you, Sitam, my, my beautiful church, Sitam. 
and we partnered with Sitam through uh, Evangelical Alliance of Kenya to start a Baliki Mushungaji initiative. We raised funds, and through that fund and the Evangelical, Evangelical Alliance of Kenya, I'm told we were able to send food for to 1,200 pastors in the rural areas who are going through tough seasons. So, Mama, I honor you. Thank you. And thank you so much for encouraging me and working with me on that journey. One time I was stuck going to South Sudan. I needed to get to South Sudan in a joint venture with the government. I was stuck for five years. I'd been there knocking on doors, seeing everybody in the government had not done anything, you had not had any breakthrough. You called me and told me, there's a lady I know, a wife of a general. And one thing led to another. I met the lady and we went. We were in South Sudan. We opened the business. And that lady actually became the first share lady of that bank. Uh, a lady called Susanna Deng. Yeah. And we, we thank God. You, you've done a lot. Uh, as I go on, let me honor this woman. Because mom mentioned about the way she, she ministered to, to dad. I grew up, not in Sitam, I grew up in another setup. And it's Wanjiko who brought me to Sitam. In a barren crusade in 1991, she's the one who brought me to the Lord. And I honor her for that. And I thank God so much. So the challenge has been given to us. That scripture about Joshua is a scripture that we prayed over many years back. Joshua 1, 3 to 6, be bold and courageous, and I'll give you every land you step on. And I like the new challenge you've been given all of us today. I went through the book. It has awesome, awesome testimonies. And uh, for me, I, I, I particularly appreciate the beat, how my, my dear brothers and sisters have, you've mentored my, my the young ones to come and take over ministry. Uh, Robert, Robert, my dear brother, listening to Robert on, on Sundays, you didn't know my brother Robert is a CEO in the corporate world, doing a great ministry. And I honor you, Robert. Thank you, a dear friend. And that the children have come in. Esther was with me in banking, actually. Esther Jambi, who is executive director, was me in banking, and she left banking, and she came here. Keep up the good job, Esther. But I think we've been challenged here today on what next, you know? And I'm challenging myself that way. Now, coincidentally, again, courtesy of a great ministry called SITAM and CBS, thank you. This month, we were on missions, you know? And Bishop Dede has really challenged us boldly on what missions and what more we need to do. And I think we are all challenged. We are all really challenged. What is more that we can do? And the message was spot on again, be, to be bold and courageous. Uh, and so, thank you for your book. And so when you asked me to come and uh, me and my wife and Juko to, to, to possibly come and support in this initiative, I think we asked ourselves then, there is a, and I read the book, it's so powerful. I think my, my question was, how will then this book get out there? And, and possibly I thought it's, it's good to say that me and my wife would be happy to support with the first 1,000 books. One, first 1,000 hey. books. So that, that is not good enough. <laughs> Yes. Amen. And one book is 1,500. Do your mathematics. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. And, and, and we leave it to JMB and the executive team then to know where to send those books to the schools and colleges out there that the young people are able to, to do that. And I think with that, is, is Lily a non and a privileged mom to be here, uh, me and Wanjuko doing this, and I'll just do then what I have to do. Thank you and God bless you. As we say in Kenya, my coffee. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. See what God has done. <laughs> wow. Wow. Congratulations. Amen. A beautiful title. We give all the glory to Jesus and tell of his love and tell of his love. We give all the glory to Jesus 
and tell of his wonderful na yesu apetu kufu tanga oh tanga za upendo na yesu apetu kufu tanga za upendo wake I want to take uh, advantage of this one moment and acknowledge Captain Paul Mwangi. Paul, I saw you. Where are you, Paul? Please come a little bit. Paul Mwangi is probably coming from South Korea or, or Afghanistan or wherever. But this man said that as long as there is any pad racing in home care, he will always be there for us. He's done it for more than 20 years. Thank you so much. God bless you. Yeah. Well, a joy to be here with Judy to celebrate the 40 years that uh, the fa this father that he's brought home care. I was introduced here many years back. Wife, who is not here with me, um, she had immunity. Want to come to places because of uh, we've been together. It's kind of the same time uh, home care has survived so far. And uh, we can only see greater things happening as we move on because we are not over yet uh, in working together with home care. The journey has begun and will continue. And I always say that what Judy is doing is basically what we all should do in our own way, in a small place here and there. James, uh, why those and the orphans, make sure they're coming to eat. We cannot be able to do that alone. So we don't have to actually come to do it here. Even uh, There are many of them. Uh, so please do, because as God keeps us here on this earth, he does not keep us just to take care of us. Uh, we need to, if we go, extra three years, will you just say, please God, add me another 20 years, so that I can uh, continue enjoying with my family. No, you have to have a petition, a compelling petition to God. Why do you want, do you want me to keep you here on earth for another 10, 5 years? What are you going to do, be doing? So let's always try to do something. He blesses us to, for ourselves. He blesses us to touch another one, another. This can continue. And if we do this basically, even in this world, there will be no poor people. If we are able to touch two, three people, because doesn't matter how much you have. If you can be able to give a hundred shillings out of a thousand, that is good. Because the more money people get, the more they are able to give. Because a hundred thousand out of a million is so much money. But you have whatever God has trusted you with, whatever you are supposed to use it. What is in your hands is what matters, not what you are aiming to get in the next few years. Thank you so much for being here. And again, let's continue working together and supporting uh, this dear lady a friend, a family friend, and a personal friend. Can you hear me? Yes, I think I'm... First of all, to the founders of home care. I want to call Mrs. Gedi, Angela Gedi. I think among us, Angela, you are are the one who is who has eaten more salt. Where's Angela? I hope she hasn't gone. Followed by our sister Lois. Lois, I think you have eaten a little bit more salt. <laughs> and then Eunice Gadebi. I'm calling the ones who are there the first time. Has Mrs. Gabby gone? Yeah, please come. Please come. Angela, we want to honor you. Mrs. Gabby. Receive this book with a lot of love from Dr.
please come. Yeah, another book, another book. Thank you. Please honor Lois, honor Lois. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. A big clap, a big clap, a big clap. Amen. Amen. Eunice Gadidi. Hallelujah. My auntie has not come and she was there, okay? A big, big clap. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And Veronica, come out. Hey, Veronica, please come. Amen. Bwana sifiwe. Bwana sifiwe sana. Amen. 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 A big, big clap. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You know, this book, everybody is going to get a copy. Katase of Mr. Muriuki. Imagine, everybody who is, is going to get a copy. Amen. If you want to give friends, you can buy more. But courtesy of Dr. Muriuki and Mrs. Muriuki, everyone is getting a copy. So please clap for Veronica. Amen. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. We want to cut the cake, but I want to call a few other people. Uh, the Committee of Home Care. Can you come quickly and get a book each? Elizabeth Karanja, please come. The other committee members, please come. Alice, you know yourselves, I don't have to call you because there is no time. If you don't come, you'll not get a book, and you'll not get a picture, you'll not get a, memo a, a memory. Margaret, <laughs> that you can get a picture. Hallelujah. This is Neri Gishao. Neri also prayed. Do you remember Gishao of Kenya Power? Yes. And now because of these masks, you can't see her very well. But this is Neri. And she also brought her family and her husband. We are talking what we did. Alice, Bernice, please come. Please come. We get more books. Hallelujah. Bernice, please come. We will now just take pictures. All right. I want to call another. I want, please allow me, uh, uh, my friend uh, Rubadiri, please allow me to call Justice Musinga and his wife. Justice Musinga, we want to honor you. Oh, this is another committee member. Okay, okay, Rosemary is a committee member, so she's getting one. Please, let's honor this couple. We've been in Bible study with them for many years. I'm not calling him because of the recent case. We have been, hallelujah, we have been together for many, many years. Really? Yes. I also want to call my prayer partners, uh, 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 Justin Kitonga. Please come and get a book. Amen. This is Bishop Kitonga. Yes. And you can share it with your bishop. The, the chauffeur. Hallelujah. My son, Dr. Mwambili, please come. Okay, the, the three regional leaders, Tabitha. Tabitha, please come. Tabitha. Dr. Sarah and Janetta, please come. Okay. This is a chauffeur man. Amen. This three ladies, Daktari. This one comes from Nakuru. From Nakuru. Great work. And then Janetta from Rimuru, taking care of over half. Rimuru. Uh, they are working with uh, Sister Radia, Bishop Radia. Please come and get a book. Quickly, Radia, please. That is a <laughs> Uh, I want to call um, uh, Justice Mudoga on behalf of my sister who is going to be with the Lord, Charity Mudoga. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Read it for the girls. Read this for the girls and tell them what their mother would have told them. Amen. Amen. International guests, Jeff and Mark, Valentine, please come nearer. Val, please come nearer. Amen. Jennifer, please come. Valentine, please come, and then Jennifer. Jennifer. <laughs> 